For most, ghost trains are fun stories to discuss with friends around a campfire. Tall tales of spectral locomotives haunting the railways and frightening tired enginemen. In Britain, however, Ghost trains, and sometimes stations, are a very real thing. Although these ghost trains aren't paranormal in nature, but parliamentary. When railways were the hot new thing in Britain, they were seen by many of the upper classes as a very posh and sophisticated means of travel, and the railway companies were more than happy to play up this image to make themselves look equally as fanciful. Certain members of Parliament, however, felt that the railways had a responsibility to provide transportation for everyone, especially the working classes who'd greatly benefit from the connections railways provided. As such, in 1844, the Railway Regulation Act was passed, which decreed that all railways were to run at least one third-class service a day, stopping at every station. Tickets were to cost one penny a mile, the trains were to travel no slower than 12 miles an hour, and third-class carriages must be sufficiently protected from the weather and have seating. Most railway companies naturally didn't want to comply with this law, as letting the working class ride on the railways would ruin the high-class image they'd built for themselves, but the law stated it must be so. Then, the railway directors had an idea. They'd run the third-class trains as required, but the bare minimum amount each day and at awkward times that meant few people would be able to ride them. This way, they would be following the letter of the law while not having to run first and second class services alongside third, helping maintain that image of prestige. Most of these third-class services would be empty, and the awkward times made them rare to spot, earning them a reputation as ghost trains. Fast forward to today, railway companies have long since given up delaying third-class services. Despite this, the practice of running ghost trains hasn't vanished completely. After the privatisation of Britain's railways, the system changed so that railway companies would be given contracts by the government to operate trains on specific parts of the railway network and between various stations. Thanks to competing buses and roads, however, some routes see little to no passenger traffic, to the point where it isn't worth running trains on the line at all. Despite this, the railway company must operate services on these lines or lose their contract with the government. They could close the route if they so wished, but it would take both a lot of time and money to get the government to approve it, and there's no guarantee that they would actually be able to successfully close the line. Not to mention, it has happened before where a line was closed down due to low traffic, only for demand for transport to pick up again a few years later. And some of the low traffic lines are useful as alternative routes for more important services should there ever be a line closure or the train need to be diverted. As such, many railway companies don't want to outright close the lines, but at the same time don't want to run services on them either. What are they to do? Well, run the bare minimum amount of services whenever is convenient. This way, they're completing their contractual obligations while not losing too much money on the route. As with their 19th century counterparts, their often empty carriages and rare appearances have led to these services earning the nickname of Ghost Trains. Some examples include the one-way service from London Victoria to Ramsgate at 5 past 6 in the morning on Mondays to Fridays, the service from Fishguard Harbour to Cardiff Central that runs at 12.40pm on Saturdays and Sundays, and the service between Stallybridge and Stockport that only runs on Saturdays at 8.30am. And it's not just ghost trains that exist, but stations too. In its heyday, New Haven Marine Railway Station served as a connection to a ferry service that travelled between England and France. In the 1980s, the ferry terminal was moved closer to New Haven Town, greatly decreasing the station's foot traffic, and after the completion of the Channel Tunnel in 1994, the station was practically useless. Nonetheless, services to the station had to continue so Southern Rail didn't lose their contract for the rest of the network. For a while, New Haven Marine was simply another one-train-a-day station that was open out of obligation until 2006, when the canopy that covered the platform was deemed a safety hazard. The station building was closed, and a fence was put up along the platform to prevent passengers from getting off at the stop. For anyone who wanted to actually board a train at the station, a notice was put up instructing them to call a local taxi service to take them to the next stop 
and afterwards they could call Southern Railways who'd then reimburse them their taxi fare. Given that the nearest station was only a two minute walk away, most passengers just went there by foot. In 2017, the station building was finally torn down, making New Haven Marine a literal ghost station that was still being serviced by ghost trains. Despite being closed physically, Southern Rail was still legally obligated to service the station, even though nobody could get on or off there. Eventually, in 2018, plans were put forward to formally close the station, and by the 22nd of October 2020, New Haven Marine was closed for good. Ghost trains and ghost stations, despite all the stories of spectres and spirits, are a very real thing, just maybe not quite as interesting or exciting as the tales old railway men tell you. Contractual obligations can lead to some strange circumstances, but let's be thankful that they at least give some railway lines a chance to find purpose, rather than being axed at the first sign of low traffic. So next time you're at your local railway station, check the timetable, because you never know if you might see a ghost train yourself. Just don't expect to see the Ghostbusters chasing after it. Subscribe for more.